Liquefaction is, first, condensation into water. Second, the melting of a solidified body. The first, condensation, is due to the cooling of vapor. What melting is will appear from the account of solidification. Whatever solidifies is either water or a mixture of earth and water, and the agent is either dry heat or cold. Hence those of the bodies solidified by heat or cold, which are soluble at all, are dissolved by their opposites. Bodies solidified by the dry hot are dissolved by water, which is the moist cold, while bodies solidified by cold are dissolved by fire, which is hot. Some things seem to be solidified by water, for example, boiled honey, but really it is not the water but the cold in the water which affects the solidification. Aqueous bodies are not solidified by fire, for it is fire that dissolves them, and the same cause in the same relation cannot have opposite effects upon the same thing. Again, water solidifies owing to the departure of heat, so it will clearly be dissolved by the entry into it of heat. Cold, therefore, must be the agent in solidifying it. Hence, aqueous bodies do not thicken when they solidify. For thickening occurs when the moisture goes off and the dry matter comes together, but water is the only liquid that does not thicken. Those bodies that are made up of both earth and water are solidified both by fire and by cold, and in either case are thickened. The operation of the two is in a way the same and in a way different. Heat acts by drawing off the moisture, and as the moisture goes off in vapor, the dry matter thickens and collects. Cold acts by driving out the heat, which is accompanied by the moisture as this goes off in vapor with it. Bodies that are soft but not liquid do not thicken but solidify when the moisture leaves them, for example, potter's clay in process of baking. But those mixed bodies that are liquid thicken besides solidifying, like milk. Those bodies which have first been thickened or hardened by cold often begin by becoming moist. Thus, potter's clay at first in the process of baking steams and grows softer and is liable to distortion in the ovens for that reason. Now, of the bodies solidified by cold, which are made up both of earth and water, but in which the earth preponderates, those which solidify by the departure of heat melt by heat when it enters into them again. This is the case with frozen mud. But those which solidify by refrigeration, where all the moisture has gone off in vapor with the heat, like iron and horn, cannot be dissolved except by excessive heat, but they can be softened, though manufactured iron does melt, to the point of becoming fluid and then solidifying again. This is how steel is made. The dross sinks to the bottom and is purged away. When this has been done often and the metal is pure, we have steel. The process is not repeated often because the purification of the metal involves great waste and loss of weight. But the iron that has less dross is the better iron. The stone pyrimachus, too, melts and forms into drops and becomes fluid. After having been in a fluid state, it solidifies and becomes hard again. Millstones, too, melt and become fluid. When the fluid mass begins to solidify, it is black, but its consistency comes to be like that of, of lime and earth, too. Of the bodies which are solidified by dry heat, some are insoluble, others are dissolved by liquid. Pottery and some kinds of stone that are formed out of earth burnt up by fire, such as millstones, cannot be dissolved. Natron and salt are soluble by liquid, but not all liquid, but only such as is cold. Hence, water and any of its varieties melt them, but oil does not. For the opposite of the dry hot is the cold moist, and what the one solidified, the other will dissolve, and so opposites will have opposite effects.